today I'm not a judge. Sorry. I, am, I am a photographer today. <laughs> and I, and, and I, uh, I love photography. It's going to be hard to beat the uh, video that we saw. Uh, and I, that little three-year-old uh, learning about life for the first time is the way I feel about photography still. So I uh, want to share with you a couple of things that I thought would be interesting since most of you are very young and know digital photography, right? But you don't know anything about the traditional large format photography that uh, really goes back to the Matthew Brady, the Civil War, fast forward to the 1930s and Edward Weston and a group of wonderful California photographers. Uh, Imogene Cunningham was another in that group. And then uh, all the way up to about 1989, and what you're going to see today is state-of-the-art 1989, but it really was uh, state-of-the-art all the way back uh, prior to 1900. And uh, there are a few features that I think are amazing still that you cannot do with digital photography, and I'm going to kind of emphasize those uh, in, in uh, this little presentation. So uh, how did those uh, great photographers like Edward Weston and Ansel Adams and Imogene Cunningham get all that great detail uh, in, in, their, uh, in their images without the benefit of digital photography, which hadn't even been thought of yet? Well, uh, this is the, I'm going to show you how they did that uh, in a minute, well, but this is the simplicity of the camera. I, I opened it up so you can see there's no springs, no mirrors, uh, no, uh, uh, nothing in there but just it goes from front to back. You can stick your hand all the way through there. There's, uh, there's nothing uh, gimmicky about it at all. And what happens is you put the, uh, the lens, this is the lens, uh, put that on the front. And then you, uh, you get it nice and uh, focused on whatever you want on this ground glass back here. And everything will be upside down and left to right reverse. So you've got to learn to look uh, uh, underneath this little uh, black cloth. Uh, to uh, compose your image the way you want it. Once you get it the way you like it on the ground glass, you then stick in the film holder, which will have, uh, have film in there. This is actually loaded with 5x7 film. Uh, and uh, the film is, is going to look like this. Uh, there's, one, there's an actual developed one in there. And you, uh, then, you, then you snap the shutter. And that's the, uh, that's the process. Then you take the film back home. I have a dark room at home and uh, you uh, take about 20 minutes per negative to, to develop them one at a time. So that's kind of the, the basic process. Now how did they get those uh, wonderfully uh, uh, focused in great detail? Well, one, one thing you got to remember is a 5 by 7 negative, and they use, usually use 8 by 10, but a 5 by 7 negative is 35 square inches of data. It's not digital data, but it is data, and it's really millions of uh, data points in a, in, a, in a negative. So that first, the first step was getting a large format negative, which would capture lots of information. All right, another way that they got a, a, a tremendous detail, you see, this is, this is the lens. Can you see? Uh, I have it wide open through there. But whenever you stop down the lens to, uh, I'm going to stop it down halfway. You see now how the aperture is much smaller. See, it's kind of a, that's on uh, f22. Now f22 is about as small as modern cameras. Your your digital cameras will go. Usually they just go to f16. Sometimes they go to f22. Uh, but this one will go all the way down to f45, and really I can push it down to about f64. Now do you see how tiny that hole is now? Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the hole in there. The, the, in fact, the F64 group in the 1930s, that was Ansel Adams, Imogene Cunningham, Edward Weston, and some others, they, they adopted that name because of the small aperture, and it's like a pinhole effect. You know what a pinhole is, a pinhole camera? Well, in addition to the pinhole here, which is that's the pinhole in there, the F64, you have the lens. So between the two, you get exceedingly good uh, uh, resolution uh, from very close in all the way out to infinity. So. So, so the, the first step was using the aperture, all right? Okay, so that, that was uh, uh, one, uh, one way in which the, uh, it worked. All right, let's see if I can get this to uh, fit in here. Uh, put on the wrong glasses, actually. Right there. The, uh, 
Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you like it was we were sitting out in the field and there was a mountain and all that out there. So we were. Uh, all right, I'm gonna turn this around a bit. Okay, the second way, second method is something you cannot do on digital, and you young people who are smarter can figure this out someday and get a patent on it and go to Jill. Where is Jill? <laughs> she will help you. <laughs> All right, but here it is an optical principle. Let's say that we were out in the desert and it was far from here to almost infinity, a desert scene. And if we were to focus, say, 30 feet into the picture, we would get a, a plane of, imagine a glass, 30 sheet of glass uh, at 30 feet out going up, straight up and down. That would be what we call the plane of perfect focus. Everything a little closer would be get blurry, way out in infinity would also be blurry. Understand that principle? That's the way it normally works even with your modern digital cameras. Okay, but there's, a, there's an old-fashioned solution to that. You tilt this lens forward five, about five degrees, it usually is enough, to the point where the, the plane of the thing that you're trying, if it's a flat surface like that, uh, of the desert floor, Tell, tell that, which is down here by the tripod, this line and this line all coincide. I won't tell you there's a guy's name who invented or discovered this principle. Then the imaginary piece of glass tilts over, not five degrees, but like 90 degrees, and the entire desert floor from three feet away to infinity will be in perfect focus. Anything above it won't be in perfect focus. But you're not interested in the air above it. You're interested in the desert floor. So this very slight five degree tilt will get uh, back here. Even though this is vertical, it will, the desert floor will be in perfect focus. That's another little uh, trick that these wonderful old view cameras, uh, also known as large format cameras, uh, allowed you uh, to, to do. Now, you might say, how could that be? That just sounds impossible. You get five degrees and it tilts over 90 degrees. I'm telling you, that's the way it works. And it is an amazing principle. Now, there are limitations of that. What if there was a big tree that stuck, uh, you know, 30 feet into the picture that stuck high into the air? Well, then the top of the tree is going to be out of focus if you do this. So it's not, there are limitations on it. But I have been in many situations where it actually works quite well. The, the plane that you're interested in it has nothing protruding up or down, and, 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 and this little uh, this this principle, this optical principle, will save the day. All right. So we've got two things so far. We got the small aperture, and we got this uh, this ability to tilt, and those two things account for really all of the uh, the high resolution. And of course, you you have the big negative which will uh, give you capture millions of data pieces so that, that you don't get uh, uh, the, the resolution is there. Okay, one last uh, little, um, is this going backwards or forwards? <laughs> Down. 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 Okay, Down. good. Yeah, Only eight time. minutes, seven and a half minutes, all right. <laughs> uh, uh, the other uh, piece that I want you to, uh, to understand that the, you, usually today the digital cameras will run through is the problem of converging verticals. You know what converging verticals are? How many of you have taken a picture of a building? And, and, and you know, it's got straight sides like this that go up, and then it looks like the Transamerica Pyramid, whenever you, you, you and it looks, it goes up like this, right? You know why that is? Uh, well, it's, uh, it, it's, you see, if you, if you tilt the camera up like that, then the optics are, it's going to, uh, because remember, down here is uh, well, it will it will it will cause it the, the, the vertical lines to converge either uh, if you're tilting up, then in the picture it's going to shrink as you go up higher. Now, in uh, the architects love these kind of cameras because there there was an easy way to solve that problem. If you have the back, the, the negative, perfectly aligned, straight up and down, vertical. You cannot, there's no optical way to converge. It will preserve the parallel lines in the, in the picture. No matter, even if you were to tilt this, it wouldn't matter, it still would do it. So, uh, so, but then you would say, well, but you're only gonna get the bottom of the building, right? Right, except for this. 
you see, here's the other wonderful thing about these cameras. You can move this up and down. And these lenses are made so that the circle of, of, uh, the circle of illumination back here is like this. It's about the size of a basketball, uh, the diameter of a basketball. And, and this uh, negative is only uh, uh, capturing part of that big circle. So what you do is you, you move this up and down until you get the part of the picture you want. Now, my lenses are kind of what we call the standard. If I were to spend a couple thousand dollars more, I could get some that would even have a bigger circle of illumination. But the truth is, the ones I have have always come through for me. I've never been disappointed with the... You, and, and you might say, well, that's not much. Well, you can tilt this back like this. You can move this forward like that. We'll get it, uh, uh, so you, you know there, there are ways to even uh, improve on the uh, to improve on the amount of displacement. Can you so, play it like an accordion? Uh, <laughs> good, good. Uh, 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 yes, uh, uh, no, not really. Uh, the the uh, uh, but it is light tight in there. I mean, there's no light that can get in there. There's total darkness inside. Once you put the uh, the film holder in. It's uh, like this. It's uh, completely uh, dark in there until you snap the shutter, and then a little bit of light comes in, and then uh, you, you captured uh, you captured the image. Uh, so that's my presentation. <laughs>